Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at using the pan and zoom behavior for RAD Chart View, part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight and WPF control suites for .NET XAML development. In today's video, first we're going to create a RAD Cartesian chart so we have a chart to actually work with for displaying this behavior. Then we're going to go and add the zoom and pan behavior, and finally we're going to perform some customizations on the behavior just so you can see how much control you have over it when putting it in your new charts. As you can see, I already started a new project in Visual Studio using the Telerik Visual Studio extensions and went ahead and added the Telerik Windows Controls, Telerik Windows Controls Chart, and Telerik Windows Data Assemblies. So we're all set to go for this example. As I mentioned for starters, we're going to make a brand new RAD Cartesian Chart. So we can go Telerik RAD Cartesian Chart, give it a name since we'll be wanting to assign an item source, make it X Chart, keep it real simple. And now the RAD Cartesian Chart is going to require a number of different elements. We'll step through them real quick since you can check out the Getting Started video for Rad Cartesian Chart, but then we'll come back and add the behavior and actually see how it interacts with the chart itself. So first, Telerik Rad Cartesian Chart Grid gives us a Telerik Cartesian Chart Grid, and for this we don't need too many different settings. We're just going to go with dash arrays. So major X line dash array and major Y line dash array. Next, we're going to go ahead and go along with what the designer is telling us and set a horizontal axis. So Telerik, right Cartesian chart, horizontal axis. For this, we want to go ahead and use a categorical axis. Then we're going to again follow the designer prompt and say Telerik, rad Cartesian chart, vertical axis. And in this case, we're going to use a Telerik linear axis. And last but certainly not least, we want to add a data series to use, since Design View is telling us we need a series to display this data. So we're going to say Telerik. In this case, we want to do an area series. And for an area series, we're of course going to need both a category, which is going to be the horizontal binding, so say X value. And we'll also need the value binding, which you can usually say is the Y axis, so Y value. So now we have a fully set up Red Cartesian chart but we want to step into code to go ahead and actually add some data to this. Went ahead and pre-made a class, chart data class. We'll use this on the loaded event. With chart data class, we're going to create a new list called chart datas. We'll need a random, just for making ourselves some points. And we want to do a for loop. And in this case, I'm going to do length 200. So we can say chart data class CDC equals new chart data class CDC x value, this is an integer, will just be i, and CDC y value will be new random, next double, and we'll say times 100. So we're going to let the axis take care of scaling, get the axis take care of all that stuff automatically, and you can see what we get out of the box. Of course, we want to add this to the chart data's collection. CDC. And last but not least, since we have that granular control over what data we assign to our different chart series, we'll say X chart series 0, since we only have a single series using index notation. Item source equals chart datas. Now we have everything we need to actually display this route chart. Wait for Internet Explorer to pop up, and we'll see our brand new route chart view, our Cartesian chart version, displaying in Internet Explorer. Now, as you can see, we plotted 200 data points. It's making the chart a little bit busy, so we can definitely do better with this. In order to accomplish that, we'll utilize the pan and zoom behavior. Now, adding this to your solution is actually incredibly easy. So we'll step back into the XAML, and now we'll scroll up. Just for uniformity, I always like to put the behaviors up before the grid or anything else, just so I know exactly where they are. So I'll go ahead and say Telerik, Rad Cartesian Chart, let IntelliSense help me out dot behaviors and now you can see we have a number of behaviors available including pan and zoom selection tooltip and trackball and this video is just covering pan and zoom there's gonna be another one coming up covering trackball and down the line you'll see selection and tooltip get their own videos as well but I'm gonna go ahead and just use pan and zoom behavior and there's two things I want to set here pan mode will be horizontal and zoom mode will also be horizontal since I don't have that much fluctuation in the y-axis values, I'm not going to set the pan and zoom behavior to utilize those, but I do have that option if you have a lot of data on both the horizontal and vertical axis. 
Now with just adding these few lines of XAML, let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do with our chart view now. Hit F5 to run this, and our explorer is popping up now. And now we can see all of a sudden we have that same very, very busy chart, but we also see this scroll bar at the bottom. And I can go ahead and move the scroll bar and you see the chart itself is kind of stretching out. So now, whereas we were showing 200 points before, now we see 20 points visible on our screen. Or we can go way up and see, let's see, the labels are going to get a little bit cramped. There's about 100 points. But of course, that's just zooming. We also have the option to pan. So if we want to move across this data, we can see it all, again, live in the chart. And if I make that zoom range a little bit smaller so we can actually see the labels moving by, as we scroll, we see our labels go flying by as we move through these 200 points of data. But of course, one step better, if you don't want to use the scroll bar and just want to queue in on a very specific part of your chart, you simply click and drag to choose a zoom area. So I'm going to click, drag across the chart, and we've instantly zoomed to that area, and you can see the axis have all lined up and work very nicely with this. So of course, we've seen the Cartesian chart, we've seen the pan and zoom behavior, how do we go about customizing this? Well, there are two simple settings that you are definitely going to want to utilize, and this is mainly so that users don't zoom in to the point where you see a single data point, because especially on a chart with 200 points, it's not going to make terribly much sense. For this, we're going back up to the Cartesian chart declaration, and here we're going to set two things. One is going to be max zoom, and max zoom and the additional zoom property I'm going to be setting next are both sizes. So in this case, we're going to say 10.1 for our max zoom, and our initial zoom will also be 10.1. Now this is basically telling you, and again, remember we're using 200 points, so there's going to be a 10 to 1 ratio of what's displayed versus the overall size of the chart. So we're going to be seeing about 20 data points when we start this up. Wait for Internet Explorer one more time. And when it displays, we're going to see we now have 20 points displaying. This is actually the minimum extent that we can go with our zooming. So as we scroll, we can see that same exact effect of panning across all the data, it all displaying. We can still go way up in what we display, but there is a limit to how small this data can get. So I'm going to scroll all the way back to the beginning, and you'll see this effect as I go. We go, we move the right side of the scroll bar, and we can see we're going up to 60, 70, 80 points. But as we go down, I'm going to try and move the scroll bar down, and while the scroll bar is moving right now, you can see we stopped and topped off at displaying a minimum of 20 points, which is that max zoom level we already defined. I hope you enjoyed watching using the zoom and pan behavior with RAD chart view, specifically the RAD Cartesian chart that we were just displaying for the Telerik RAD controls for SolarLight and WPF. And again, don't forget, this is part of a series trying to introduce you to RAD chart view and all the great new features and functionality, so definitely stay tuned for more.